Hi, right, today we're at Hole in the Wall Campground. We're going on a hike out to the Rings Trail in Banshee Canyon. So up here's the uh, campground. Come down this trail. And you want to head out to the Information Center. That's where the trail begins. And in the box here, there should be a little trail guide in the box. But uh, nothing's in it. So, you're on your own. So whatever I find, I hope I'm right. All right, head up our trail here. We're gonna go out to this canyon. So first up, this is a Cooper's Golden Bush. Eric Camaria, Cooper Eye. Got these little yellow flowers on it. Just coming up for springtime. Otherwise it gets this, uh, you know, winter dull, sticky branchy shape on it. All right, one of the more common plants out here at our campground. Hey, here's another golden bush. This one's called a linear leaved golden bush. I mean, it's exactly right, but the uh, the leaves, of course, see how they're a little straighter than our uh, Cooper's golden bush. Anyway, this is also Ericamaria genus. It's Ericamaria linear linearifolia. Ericamaria linearifolia. That's this plant here. You can barely tell them apart though from a distance. Now this tree here, it looks like he's dead. He's just dormant. He's an acacia. He's called a cat claw. Acacia gregii. And growing on him, that's our desert mistletoe. It's called uh, Phoradendron californicum. And that mistletoe is a parasite, so he kind of puts his roots into the branches of our acacia and sucks it dry. And you only find this mistletoe on the trees. You don't find them on the shrubs and the bushes. So that's a type of acacia, acacia gregii, the cat claw. Cool, more to come. All right, so this little shrub, this is called a rabbit brush. He kind of looks dead, dormant, but he's got some growth coming up here for springtime. How about that? This is a uh, chrysothamnus paniculatus out here in the uh, Mojave National Preserve. It's called a rabbit brush. He's pretty common too. All right, we've got another shrub on our trail. This guy's called a sweet bush. Apparently he smells kind of sweet, but you see he's got these little leaves coming in. All right, just for springtime. He's a roundish bush, a shrub, you find out here in Mojave. His Latin name, he's Bebia juncia, or Bebia juncia, either way's okay. But um, he'll come out really full and green in a couple months. Fantastic. All right, so this little guy, he's called a matchweed. Look how thin he is. He's got these little uh, sea buds and flowers on the top. He's Gutierrezia microcephala. So micro, of course, means tiny. Cephala just refers to the little heads on these uh, flowers. Matchweed. How about that? Look how tiny it is. See, he's pretty brittle. Yeah, he's pretty brittle, too. Wow. All right, so this cactus is really popular out here. This is a pencil choa, or choya, if you want to be more specific. It's an opuntia ramosissima, or it might be a cylindropuntia. Either way is okay. It's got these really long needles, probably about an inch and a half long. And the segments here gives it its name cylindropuntia because it's cylindrical, as opposed to an opuntia. Okay, like a prickly pear. There's a whole bunch of these out here. Great plant, or pencil chola. All right, this shrub here, this is a horse brush. Tetradymia stenolepis. And he's got these little thorns on him, right? 
like a hop sage or a horsebrush or they got these thorns so they'll kind of prick you if you're not careful very fuzzy little leaves on this plant here wow and they're tiny of course because they help with uh, reducing evaporation and transpiration water loss and heat loss because it gets pretty hot up here all right horse brush wow all right so this little shrub or bush this is called mormon tea mormon tea ephedra nevidensis and he's very um pencil like see these long long stems here coming up and he'll flower get little seed pods there you go right there like that it's called mormon tea so here's another little shrub. This is Kyle. This guy's called Turpentine Broom. All right. And he smells like kerosene or oil, even turpentine. So if you rub it and then you smell it, it's got this really oily smell to it. So this is a uh, Thamnosma Montana. And, um, Kind of like our Mormon tea, it's got that, these long stems here coming out, reaching uh, upward, as opposed to horizontal. It's got these little flower buds coming in. Look at that. Okay, so this guy will flower and seed in April or May, and make more of this uh, turpentine broom. Wow, we're not even to the visitor center yet, and we've already looked at all these plants. So there's a lot more to come, I think. Up here is a pancake uh, cactus. We'll take a look at him. So here's our pancake cactus, Opuntia chlorotica. So he's an Opuntia. See, he's got these flat pads here, right? Uh, like a prickly pear cactus, he's got these flat pads instead of the cylindrical pads. So that makes an opuntia as opposed to a cylindropuntia. All right, hey, up here, we have another, another one of our Engelmann's hedgehog cacti, Econoceris humanii. He's a little one. Look him glow in the sun, though. He's got these really long spines. And watch out if you're barefoot out here. Sometimes um, they kind of hide between the other bushes. You'll step on them. So just be careful. All right, a little hedgehog cacti. Echinoceris inglemanii. Hey, here's another one of our silver cholas here. All right. Some people call them Puntia echinocarpa, but his real name is really Cylindropuntia. Echinocarpa, and Echinocarpa means spiny fruit. All right, it's our silver chola. It's a little guy here. So here we have our buckhorn chola, our choya, Opuntia acanthocarpa, or Cylindropuntia acanthocarpa. And acantha means sword. We got a better one over here. I'll show you. And carpa is fruit. Buckhorn. It's got his name Buckhorn, of course, because he looks like a, a buckhorn from like a deer or a buckhorn. How about that? And over here, we got our some more silver chola. So here's our beaver tail cactus, Opuntia basilaris. And he's kind of like the pancake cactus, but he's a lot smaller. And he's uh, this guy's a little more shriveled up. And look at that, there's basically spineless. You see here? All right. He's a beaver tail cactus, because apparently his leaves here, or his pads, they look like uh, little beaver tails. How about that? All right, so this guy here, he's called a paper bag bush. Salazaria Mexicana, or Mexicana. And he's not flowering now. But when he does, 
the flower pods or the seed pods, they're going to look like uh, little paper bags that dangle down from this little shrub here. Paper bag bush. Wow, check out the bloom on this Mojave yucca. Incredible. Look at that. These are really soft flowers. You got the petals, stamens, anthers, the whole shebang in here. Wow. Look how soft this is. So here's the bark from our yucca. You see how fibrous it is? Right here? You can peel off all the fibers. Okay, you weave uh, baskets or sandals or rope, almost anything you want. And that's what the uh, Native Americans did with all these yuccas. All right, also the Joshua trees as well. They do the same kind of fibrous uh, look to it. Down here you see a lot, a lot better. Let me see here. See how, look at this. See how fibrous it is? Okay. This little shrub, this is called a cheese bush, Hymenoclea salsola. But, um, yeah, I got a better one over here, though. This guy here. It's called a cheese bush, all right? Because the, um, the flowers here in the stems, they smell like cheese. Yeah, they smell like Jeez. All right. Hymenoclea salsola. Cheese bush. Real common out here. All right, this is a big shrub here. He's got these beautiful leaves coming in. Very spiny stems. All right, this is called a black bush. You could also call it a, a black brush if you want. He's a... Uh, Collagene Ramosissima. He's really common out here. He's almost like a hop sage. Right, he's real spiny here. I just love it in the early spring when all the leaves are coming in. If you're lucky, you'll get somebody burrowing under him, like a wood rat or some other little desert animal. So this giant brush here, or bush, this is a, called a desert almond. It's called Prunus fasciculata. And it gets its name fasciculata because the leaves here, they come in bundles or fascicles as they work themselves up the stem. So you see one here, one here, one here, one here, and they're little bundles here. That's how you get the name fasciculata because they're called fascicles. Or bundles. Okay, this is a really hardy plant. It's got little thorns on him, so don't be jumping in this guy. But the stems, really thick and woody. And I'm sure um, you can make bow and arrows out of these guys, or at least bows, because they bend, but they're also very thick and hardy. Okay, and sometimes they have little, little almonds on them. Let's see here. Okay, these little flower guys, I think they're called almonds. Okay. Wow, this is a big, big bush. Desert almond. Hey, here's another one of our desert almonds. And check this out. Okay, this is not a spider web. All right, this is from a moth. And inside, you can see little worms or larvae start to come out. Here we got some on the outside here too as well. And they're just starting to emerge from their little cocoon. Wow, look at them. Look at all these guys up here. Oh my gosh. There's gotta be a thousand in there. Wow. Hey, look at this beautiful little orange flower. The first one I've seen out here. This is called a Wyoming Indian paintbrush. Look at that. Wow. So the flower, the leaves come out of the stem here. 
this bright orange reddish color. Here we go. Wyoming Indian paintbrush. Well, we finally made it to the visitor center. We're not even on the trail yet. And we already saw a lot of cool plants. Let's see if these guys are open yet. And see if we get a map. 